Welcome, Travis Lawrence with Arrow. Uh, today I thought we'd do a quick session on Site Recovery Manager 6.1. So we've had a lot of requests recently from resellers to do demonstrations and dive a little bit more into SRM. So I thought I'd do a brief video to do an overview of what that looks like and then jump into our solutions lab so you can actually see the product. Um, for me, it's always good to refresh. I mean, VMware has so many products, so many of them are are great and we need to kind of pull them together in different scenarios that it's hard to keep up with the latest updates for each of these. So I thought with this session we'd do a quick overview of what the business value really is for SRM and then jump into the interface so we can kind of tie that visual piece together. Again, that works well for me and hopefully that's valuable for the rest of you. So, um, and starting off really, SRM, the, the driver, the, the value behind that is that it's orchestrated failover for disaster recovery. So where you have customers that want to be able to keep services online, again, we're always trying to map this back to the business. What value does this bring for the business? So uh, a all the business cares about is my application is online, whether that's something, uh, a basic service like email or file sharing or whatnot, or if it's their core business where they may develop their own application and have that in-house and it's something they have a development team that works with. Either way, leveraging VMs helps us to provide some level of availability but SRM really takes that to the next level. So what SRM does is allows us to use some underlying replication to replicate those VMs between uh, a single uh, two sites or multiple sites in a one-to-many kind of configuration. And that allows us to do things like in the event of a hurricane or some other natural disaster, we can do a, a planned migration to shut down those VMs at site A and then bring them up at site B. Or in a scenario where, where we weren't aware of a disaster or some other uh, power issue or something in the, in the primary data center, we can automatically bring those, those systems online or we can reach out to that second site and kind of begin that orchestration. So that's really the core value here. And again, I think it's helpful to kind of see this in action. So we'll jump through a, a quick test scenario. Again, we'll try to keep this brief so, so we can leverage this in, in, you know, when you're trying to get on a customer call and you're thinking, what different offerings can I help this customer with? Uh, SRM is, is often one of those because DR is one of the easiest ways for us to start to leverage other sites or sometimes even other offerings like vCloud Air. So what we've got here is a vSphere 6.1 environment. Um, if we look quickly at this environment, I've got a handful of virtual machines. Again, this is our Aero Solutions Lab. If you want to get hands on with this, reach out to me as always. Um, but in this scenario, we, we have a handful of Linux and Windows VMs, and we've already implemented SRM. So again, I think we want to keep this high level for sales or technical, so we're going to consider a scenario where we've already implemented SRM. We're not going to get into the details of how that's done. I may cover that in a separate video later. But once SRM is implemented, we can see in the vSphere web client that we've got now a site recovery option. And what this does is really provides us the, the pain to... Uh, control that orchestrated failover between sites. So say I'm an administrator, uh, one of the big benefits of SRM aside from being able to do the actual failover between sites is for us to be able to test that recovery. So if you've ever been in in this scenario again you may be talking to C-level executives or you get to the point where um, those business units just want some, they want to know that their their applications are protected. For us as administrators that means that their virtual machines are protected but they don't really care about the the nuts and bolts of how that's done. But for the administrator, those, those steps make sense and it, it's really important to understand that and that's really where SRM comes in. So say I have a scenario where I have my core business application, maybe that's the custom app that I mentioned earlier that's really core to our business and this, my CTO comes and says, do we know our disaster recovery plan really works? Um, in a lot of scenarios, even customers that are more advanced and have set up DR plans uh, there's this sort of inherent fear of can we trust this? Have we tested it? Do we have to do one of the, the weekend scenarios where we bring in our infrastructure team and our applications team and our network team and everybody sits there and we grew up a big pot of coffee and we're there over the weekend failing over our production systems trying to do this during the wee hours in the morning and, and everybody's kind of tense about the scenario. But in this situation what SRM allows us to do is actually test a recovery plan. So we can do that during business hours. What we're doing is replicating, making sure those replications and changes go from one site to the other, bringing up that group of virtual machines uh, at, the, at the DR site, but doing that in an isolated way where we don't affect production. We're bringing up those same VMs, same exact host names, IP addresses and everything, 
uh, but we can do that in a test manner. So we'll show that here. That process is really similar to the full failover process, um, which we may jump into, into a, in a bit. But again, trying to keep this video brief, so I just thought we'd do this kind of ad hoc and, and see where we get with this. So again, the scenario is me being a administrator. It's maybe a Friday and, and my executive has come and said, does our disaster recovery plan work? Can you, can you faithfully say that as far as your job uh, is concerned that you can make sure that works? So in this scenario, once SRM is implemented, all we have to do as an administrator is go in and go into this particular recovery plan and say test recovery plan. And it'll, it'll give us a few screens here. So number one, we're just gonna say test confirmation. Uh, it shows our protected site, our recovery site, and the number of virtual machines. And you know it again, in our solutions lab, we're trying to keep this process quick for purposes of the video and purposes for demo. But um, I have a single virtual machine. We can always have a group of VMs. Typically you will, because you're doing this maybe on an application basis or maybe a whole site basis. Um, but all we have to do is select that. I'm gonna, there's also storage options if we wanna replicate the most recent changes. For the purposes of the demo, I'm gonna uncheck that so this goes more quickly. Um, and, but then from there, we get a confirmation screen basically saying the same information, just making ensuring the, the choices we made uh, are the ones we want to have, and then we push finish. And again, what this will do is actually step through all of these different pieces. And we won't go into these in too much detail, but what we're doing is, is ensuring that we replicate the, the latest data that we have from site A to site B. And then from there, once we have that writable storage snapshot at the other site, we, that VM is registered uh, on our secondary uh, vCenter server and the hosts there and we can bring that virtual machine online. And again, since this is a test instance, it's doing that in an isolated network. So step five you see here is it's actually going to configure an isolated vSwitch on that secondary site and bring that VM online. So if we go to this other vCenter server, which I need to log into here. So in this simulation, we're running this from our Colorado Solutions Lab. I set up a separate site that um, mimics what I would call a New York City data center. Though in reality, these are both in the same uh, location. But what we what we can see in this instance, once I bring this online, is that, that that Linux virtual machine that runs that application is running at the secondary site in addition to the primary site. So while that's opening up, if I look in the hosting clusters view here, we'll be able to see that even though it, since this is a test scenario, my VM is still running at the primary site and we haven't brought that offline, but it, it will also, that test instance will be running at, at the secondary New York site as it were. So we can see in this case, this is powered on, um, it's running. From here, then once we log into the secondary vCenter, we can look at hosting clusters and see that that same Linux virtual machine is running at the secondary site. And you may notice some of these icons look slightly different. Um, they have a little, it, it may be a little bit of difficult to see, but you can see the little green and orange icons there. That means they're being replicated using vSphere replication. And that means uh, if they're not powered on, if you don't see the little play icon, those are, those are replicated and are something that SRM is protecting in that instance. So then from here, we could launch this remote console and actually see that our VM is online. And this is where the, the true benefit is. Again, I can have my developers, I can have my DBA come in and actually hands-on test this virtual machine. It's an exact copy, so it's got the same host name, same IP address, same configuration, everything is the same, but they can test and make sure that this multi uh, virtual machine replication process is up and running and that the application is actually running in isolation, and we can test that. And then when we're done with that process, when everybody's completed all their checks, again, this can be during business hours, uh, we can go back into our SRM environment and go back into our recovery plan and clean up. So we've seen that, okay, all these steps have gone through successfully and customers can get really granular with this. If they wanna, you can set things like power on order. So if we're failing over between sites, again, we're probably gonna bring up certain network services VMs, maybe Active Directory, other pieces as priority one VMs. And then we can bring up other virtual machines in order. Maybe we have database servers that need to come online before middleware and then before web app uh, type application pieces. So we can do all those things. We can also call out to uh, scripts outside of Site Recovery Manager. 
to really customize how that process works. And again, that's one of the big benefits that customers will see over just a standard replication piece. So many arrays have replication on their own. We can also use vSphere replication. Uh, most of your customers are gonna have vSphere replication as part of their licensing. So any uh, Essentials Plus and above licenses come with a vSphere replication. Uh, there's a lot of customers out there that I, I think that aren't aware of that, and that's a virtual Linux appliance that we can do host-based replication. So replicate between hosts in the same data center or between different data centers if they have network connectivity. Um, and it can do that between local storage. It can do that with uh, shared, shared storage. So if we have Fiber Channel or NFS or iSCSI or any of those other uh, mechanisms really presenting data stores to vSphere, um, we, can do, we can do that in different ways. So even if you have an SMB customer that has an iSCSI array at their production site, but they don't have the, the budget to mimic and have that same array at another site, they can leverage vSphere replication uh, and replicate to maybe a single host with a, a shelf of disks or even a local attached storage there. Um, so vSphere replication is a component of SRM, or you can leverage array-based replication. Um, SRM has what are called storage replication adapters that can actually communicate with underlying replication in arrays and, and provide some benefit there. The real benefit with, with array-based replication is that it, it can be more granular. You can get near synchronous replication oftentimes. There may be other features that those manufacturers provide that, that are, are beneficial in that scenario. Uh, on the flip side of that, vSphere replication, again, is often included with customer licensing. They don't have to have like arrays. They don't have to have the replication license for those particular arrays. So it, it, for smaller customers, that may be beneficial. We can also do per VM replication in that scenario. So oftentimes with array-based replication, we're going to have to replicate those VMs on a LUN or data store basis. And then when we fail over with Site Recovery Manager, we're going to have to do all of those at once. And oftentimes storage architects don't necessarily want to put all those critical VMs on that same data store or on that same LUN because of performance issues and, and things like that. So um, it's really a question of what is most beneficial. Now the most important thing is we don't have to have either or. So if you have customers, we see a lot of customers that have array-based replication and they may use that for their most critical virtual machines that they want to protect with SRM. And then they used vSphere replication for all those other pieces. So we may have mid-level VMs that we would like to keep, but we don't want to have to necessarily uh, use that array-based replication. They don't need that near-synchronous uh, replication piece. So that's kind of the underlying mechanism that powers SRM, but uh, kind of looping back around, what that really means is, is SRM provides value on top of that replication. So it's, it's all well and good to be able to say, we can replicate this VM from site A to site B. I mean, a VM is really comprised of a set of files, so it's easy for us to copy that, back that up, replicate it. But the real administrative work, the overhead, uh, as it were, is the administrator and all of the teams having to bring those, those services online in a specific order, uh, making changes again to those virtual machines. We're gonna be maybe on a different network, we may have a different default gateway that gets out to the internet to present those web services to customers. There's a lot of parts and pieces, a lot of changes that we as administrators may have to deal with. And that is where SRM really comes in and orchestrates that piece and makes it simple for us to click, as we saw, a few buttons and, and fail over that process and make sure that those pieces work. Um, so that is really the value on top of those replication pieces. Um, kind of back to the demonstration here. So our test is complete. Again, from an administrative perspective, now we can say to our management, yes, we know that our DR plan works, we've tested it, and then we can click cleanup. So all this is gonna do is say, confirm that, that you wanna run the cleanup operation and remove all those test changes that you made, uh, remove that VM from the secondary site. Um, we say next, confirm that, and click finish. So you can kinda see at a, at a high level, think of the, the, maybe in the past we've had as administrators run books of here are the, 147 steps for the infrastructure team and the 200 steps for the DBAs and the applications team and the network team they all have these lists and all those parts and pieces really have to come together so the infrastructure team does these 10 things and then the network team does these things and, and it, it can be a, a daunting process so you can see we've simplified that all from you know a manual runbook process between multiple teams to you know a click of a button where we're going to test this and we don't have to be as concerned about uh, are we affecting production? How long does this take? Do we have to have people uh, away from their families over the weekend? Are there permanent changes that we didn't think about? 
and we can do this easily and go back to our executive management as well. So the, 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 only, the final piece I'd like to cover here is just the full failover process. Again, we may speed this up uh, through the magic of video, but I think it's important to show if we're going through an actual disaster, what is the difference here? So um, we do have separate recovery steps from test steps. Um, again, we can customize this as needed. The only real difference here is the primary, the virtual machine running at the primary site in this scenario or virtual machines will be powered off when we do this. So instead of clicking the green test button, we've got the sort of the big red button as it were, um, and we can run our recovery plan. And you can see we get, we get an exclamation point saying this is gonna make permanent changes to the environment. We're gonna power down VMs, um, be aware of this. So we again get our protected site so we can confirm we wanna fail over from 2.12 to 2.13. And then from here we have to click this checkbox. We, we, we can't really proceed if we don't say, I understand that this will permanently alter the virtual machines. Um, we, under, we need to understand what we're doing. We also have uh, two different scenarios here. We can do a planned migration, which is gonna say, well, we know that the primary site is st still online, but we're doing this proactively, maybe again for disaster avoidance, or we can do disaster recovery. We say no, something uh, irreversible has happened to that primary site. We just wanna take whatever data we've got from an SRM perspective and do that. So in this case, we'll say we're trying to do d disaster avoidance. We say next, and again, you can see this is really a two-step process to fail over from one site to the other. And this component takes a bit longer because it is a, we are actually powering down virtual machines. We do things like waiting for VMware tools and whatnot, uh, but it, it's actually gonna power off those VMs and, and bring them up at the secondary site. And, and again, we don't have to do that in a manual manner. So I will, I'll let this piece run for a second here, and then we'll, we'll kind of go back and wrap that up at the end and with a conclusion. Again, through the magic of video, our, our process has completed for a full failover, and now we've got our virtual machines actually at the other site, and they're up and running in that, in that scenario. So um, again, kind of to review what we've talked about. So SRM is really orchestration for disaster recovery. Um, it's very simple for us without SRM to copy virtual machines from one place to another, but that's not really where the, the business issue lies. Um, if, we, if we replicate virtual machines and we have 100 VMs and we can replicate them to a secondary site, that doesn't help the business ultimately. The business's applications are not online and, and running as they would be you know, within a short amount of time. If that process for us to fail over takes multiple teams, manual run books, and days or hours to recover, uh, the business loses money during that time and that's not necessarily what they're looking for in a DR scenario. So this really simplifies that for us to think through those processes, work through them, number one, test them so we know that they work, and then gives us as administrators a comfort level and ultimately the business a comfort level to say, yes, I know if we have this issue, I know exactly what I need to do. I've been through it multiple times. I mean, it's kind of like an analogy of, of practice. If you're going out on the football field, you're not going to go out and, and kind of wing it and play backyard football, at least in professional or college ranks. You're, if you, if you want to do disaster recovery right, we want to have gone through this and have build that comfort level with the administrators and then that kind of bubbles up to our C-level executives and other business units as it were. So hopefully this has been helpful you to kind of see that, understand that business process and then tie that in with, with the visual components of how Site Recovery Manager 6.1 really works. Um, as always, you can reach out to me at tlawrence at arrow.com or at tllawrence on Twitter. Uh, again, we, we have our, our solutions lab, our Aero Solutions Lab. Uh, we can get you some hands-on time with SRM, with other VMware products, or we can just provide other advice or sales call information if, you, if we need to talk this through with a customer and help them understand the technical components and the licensing com components. So thanks again for joining me today, and I will catch you next time.